we're here at the uh, Fur Harvesters Convention, and uh, I'm fortunate enough, Jonathan Cormier, our uh, provincial biologist, is going to give us a rundown on uh, some of the, the animals that they keep um, when you send in the carcasses. So uh, let's go in, and uh, Jonathan's going to uh, explain just exactly what happens to the carcass uh, when we do send it back in here in New Brunswick. Hey, Jonathan, how's it going? Hey, Dwight, how you doing? Good, man. So what do we got here? Right now, we're going to process some Martin. So Martin is one of the species here uh, that we have to turn in uh, to the province. Yep. So. Um, when the carcasses uh, leave the DNR, they go to your place up in Fredericton? Yep. They're, uh, yeah, uh, we have four species, but because they're a species of special management concern in the province. Uh, Bobcat, Martin, Fisher, and Otter. Um, the reason we bring in the carcasses for those four species is that they all have a few things in common. Uh, higher pelt price, low reproduction, easily trapped, or they're uh, on the CITES list, Convention of National Trade of Endangered Species, along with their ambassador muscle, which is that muscle right there, which is the same as your cheek muscle right there. So carnivores have a well-developed muscle. With juveniles, the size of that muscle is quite small and rounded, and it hasn't closed in to the sagittal crest, whereas with an adult, it's closed in all the way. So we use this as a guide to try and age before we actually do anything, whether it might be a juvenile or an adult. But with the females, we also look at the reproductive tract, the uterus. Let's that one aside. So when we're in the lab processing this stuff, we're, we're, we're looking at reproductive data. So we're trying to figure out how many females are pregnant and uh, how many young each female is having, as well as getting age class structure. Um, so by doing that, um, we open up the females, pull up the reproductive tracts, and then we flush the uteri out, uh, count the blasts, and then uh, we pull the teeth, we send the teeth out for aging, and that gives us an age. Uh, so for doing, by doing all this, we get, like I said, we get pregnancy rate, litter size, and uh, an age class structure from the harvested population. This is a male martin. Um, male martin are typically about 20 to 30 percent larger than uh, female martin. And it's easy to tell if, male, if it's a male martin because you have the back end, uh, the penis. It's actually a, a bone. We don't, the only thing we pull off male martin are, uh, in, in past years, we just count them. Um, this year, because the harvest is down, we're actually going to be aging all of our male martin this year. So again, to age them, all we do is we just cut the teeth, cut the uh, lower jaw. <laughs> And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll tag this with, with an ID number that will match up to this individual. And then we'll boil this tooth, we'll pull off these two canines, and then we'll pull off also as well the, the, uh, the fourth premolar, which is that tooth right there. The canines we actually x-ray to determine whether the individual is a juvenile or a sub-adult or an adult. And this is what they look when they come back after their x-ray. As you can see, the, it's the root that we look at. The pulp cavity in the root, if it's hollow, we know it's a juvenile. If it's grown in, then we know it's uh, older than juvenile. It's a one and a half year old or older. Um, so we'll pull these juvenile out and then we'll send these adult teeth away for aging to a lab in the States. And that's why we pull the canines. And the lab uses these fourth premolar that tooth right there, they'll use that for aging. So they'll, they'll take a cross section of it and they'll count the, the, the cementum layers, like the growth rings, like a tree. Okay. Which is like that right there. That there is actually a cross section of the tooth. So you can tell, you can see the layers, just like a tree. Um, and so this, this, the tooth from this individual uh, was, five, was five years old. Oh, oh sure. And that's all we do with the male martin. That's it. And it just gives us a count. I believe it's a female. Sometimes the trappers, when they, when they skid them, they'll cut the back of them off, so it's a little harder to tell. But it is a bit smaller. Um, so to be sure is that we will open it up. It's a little dried out and it's been predated on, so uh, it may not be intact. Sometimes. Is this where you call Grissom? 
Pardon? Should we call Grissom? So this is actually, this, this one isn't a good example to show you. Um, but that right there, that structure there is the bladder. Okay, and right underneath the bladder will be the uterus, which is this right here. So it's actually gonna work out. So, take the uterus out, cut up to the ovary, that's the ovary right there. So we'll take that out, cut that. The lighting's not very well for you to wait. And then we'll pull that out. So that there is the uterus. It's a forked, it's a forked, a, uh, forked uterus, uh, bicornate. Um, got two sides. Ovaries are there and there. And that is the end that actually continues off into the vagina. And so inside of that, this female is pregnant. Uh, Martin Fisher, a lot of the musculates undergo what's called delayed implantation. So when the, the egg is fertilized, it develops to what's called a blastist stage, and then it it, uh, it arrests, it, st it stops developing, you know, it floats around. Um, it does that, depending on the species, for 30 days to almost 90 days, sometimes a little longer, several months. <clears throat> and then through cues, through typically usually uh, sunlight, daylight hours, photo period cues, and photo period increases, um, that, that blastus will implant in the uterine wall and develop into a fetus. So when we process these, the uteri, what we'll do is we'll cut the uh, ovary off, and we'll cut down here at the fork, and then we'll insert a, uh, a syringe. We'll fill that full of water, we'll stick that inside the uteri, and we'll flush it out into a dish, do a petri dish, and I'll push all the blasts out. And then we'll count everything. And so we do that three times each side. Uh, Martin typically have about a 60 to 70 percent uh, pregnancy rate, with usually about two to three on the lower on the two side, um, young per year. So when trappers drop off their carcasses, they're supposed to affix a tag like this to the carcass. And so it lists the species, so they can check it off, uh, the sex, whether they believe it's male or female, and how they caught it, as well as the wildlife management zone, and they can put in the trapper ID and the fire license number. Um, and all that information we record down here. The most important information to put down is that you guys all match that zone. So we manage our species on a zone by zone basis. There's 27 wildlife man management zones in the province. Um, and, um, as well, we can also use that trapper ID and the fire harvester license number to pin down to that individual who caught that animal. Then we can use that as an effort to know how many people are targeting how many, <laughs> which species, and how many, how many of each species an individual is catching. And if those numbers fluctuate a lot from year to year, that uh, gives an idea whether there's a lot of effort or little effort.